Hello there and welcome to Star Wars Comics in Canon, your guide to the wider Star Wars canon through the comic book lens. And to take you on this journey, I'm your host, Mike Burton. And so brings episode 49. So guys, this week I am tackling a six-part mini-series called Target Vader. It is set between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, and it, the main people involved in it are, you know, unsurprisingly, Darth Vader, and also a character I've mentioned in passing before, Baylot Valance, and he actually first appeared in the Han Solo Imperial Cadet comic, uh, but I'll get more into that a little bit later. So any avid comic readers out there may be aware that there is a current ongoing series called Bounty Hunters. It's been going, I think it's on its ninth or 10 issue at the moment. And this series is going to be an ongoing, quite a big one. It's going to be a minimum of 25 uh, issues from what I can tell, but it may even be 50, who sort of knows. But essentially it follows around Valance as well as Boba Fett's in it, Bosk is in it, several other characters. But that is set between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So this comic, as well as the Han Solo appearance, Imperial Cadet comic both kind of serve as prequels in a way to the Bounty Hunters comics. I'd say that this one however gives a lot more backstory to Valance and you don't explicitly need to know the information about him that is in Han Solo Imperial Cadet because in this comic it does kind of go over it again. Now, this comic as well, one thing I want to note is that I actually only bought this comic because of this podcast. When I heard about there being a miniseries about Vader being targeted by bounty hunters, I was like, that doesn't really sound that cool. I mean, on paper it sounds cool because, you know, lots of action scenes and things, but I was just like, I don't need to read yet another Vader story where he just basically destroys everyone. Um, but actually, from reading this and especially doing, because I read it a while ago, I, I read it, I can't remember when I got it, I think like a year or so ago, and I've been meaning to sort of reread it but then I was like, I'm going to do it for this podcast. So I did. And when I reread it and looked through a lot of the information stuff, there's, it's actually a really cool comic. And it's a really good one to pick up if you just want to sort of dip your toes in because it's only six issues. It gives some this cool action scenes. There's character growth and all these sorts of other aspects of it. And there's familiar faces like Dengar shows up. So it's quite cool in that regard. So I would generally recommend this actually, surprisingly, because I wasn't that fussed before buying it. So issue number one of this comic was released in July 2019. Issue number six was December 2019 and the trade paperback collection was February 2020. Now, the writer for this was Robbie Thompson, who also did Imperial Cadet, as in Han Solo Imperial Cadet. I believe he also did the comic adaptation of uh, the Solo A Star Wars story as well, which I think has some additional stuff in that too. Now, this is another one of those times where there are so many artists and colour artists that I'm just going to read them all out because some of them do some issues, some do others, and it is just too much. Um, so I'm not going to waste loads and loads of time doing that. I'm just going to kind of go through them. So the artists for this one, there is Mark Leming, Chris Bolson, Stefano Landini, Marco Fehler, Roberto Di Salvo, and Georges Duarte. Now, the colour artists are Niraj Menon, Rachel Rosenberg, Jordan Boyd, Andres Mosser, Frederico Blee, Eric Arkinega, and Gieda Marquisio. Now, I do apologize to anyone if I've pronounced them wrong, but I just want to go through all of those because doing it for every single issue is quite time consuming. But, you know, thanks to all those guys, because this is a really nicely illustrated comic. So it, it works well. So just to reiterate, this comic is set between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, from all that I can tell, and serves as some sort of predecessor to the Bounty Hunters comics as well. And the Bounty Hunter comics are written by Ethan Sachs, who has also done several other bits of Star Wars work. He did Star Wars Allegiance, which I did very early on in this podcast, and he also did the Galaxy's Edge miniseries, which I did a little while ago too. So, you know, I'll be tackling the Bounty Hunters comics on this podcast at some point. I just want to make sure I get through all of these sort of older comics before I start delving into this new ones. So the cruel for this one. Darth Vader is the most dangerous being in the galaxy. With the entire military might of the Empire at his disposal and the dark side of the force at his command, no foe can hope to challenge him and win. But someone has a score to set up with the Dark Lord. The hunt is on. So yeah, that's cool. I mean, obviously that little crawl is nice. I would probably argue that Darth Vader is not the most powerful being in the galaxy, considering Palpatine seemingly can just destroy him whenever he wanted. Maybe Vader could have become the most powerful um, being in the galaxy if Obi-Wan hadn't sliced his limbs off and basically left him on fire. But 
that's neither here nor there. He is very, very powerful, and I can safely say I would never want to go up against Vader. And if anyone, you know, you see it in the films and things, Rogue One gets a pretty good idea of how powerful Vader is. One of the best shows as well, I would say, is there's the Vader Down comics, which are excellent. It's like a crossover event between the first run of Darth Vader comics and the main run of Star Wars. Tackled it on this very show. Um, so that's a really good way of looking at it. But if you also, if anyone plays Je um, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, the game it is excellent. And at some point, Vader shows up and it is... <laughs> <laughs> it gives a really good showing of just how weak most Jedi are and how I'm um, like in comparison to Darth Vader like he's so much more powerful obviously when you see him in Return of the Jedi and Luke goes against him it's like oh this guy seems to beat him quite easily and it's like well it's because you know he's the dark side of the force is weaker in vader when he's around luke and there's a, that sort of you know they describe it when kylo ren has it you know the sort of the light side fighting in the dark and all those sorts of things and obviously vader is holding back quite a lot because he never actually necessarily wants to kill luke so it, it's lots of these little bits and pieces where vader is incredibly powerful and this comic along with vader down and um star wars jedi fallen order they're the three things as well as the end of Rogue One which I think give the best view and show of how powerful Vader actually is. So without further rambling let's get on with the narrative. So issue number one is named On the Hunt and it starts off with there's some gang members discussing someone picking off members of the Hidden Hand and they are confirming that they've been doing business with the Hidden Hand for a little while and they pay loads and it seems to be really good but it's high risk, high reward. If you get caught by anyone, you can be in a lot of trouble. While they're discussing that, Vader comes and unsurprisingly basically kills everyone. Now, one of the people he actually kills is someone who is saying, look, I don't know anything else about the hidden hand. I've told you all I've got. Please just believe me. And he's like, oh, I do believe you. And then he kills him anyway. So <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Um, and it turns out that the hidden hand are actually smuggling weapons from the Empire to the Rebellion. That's basically what's going on. And so Vader is tasked with trying to stop it. So that's the sort of prologue thing. And then it cuts to a bounty hunter's guild. And you've got a gentleman with his face down at a table. And he is identified as Baylert Valance. Now, obviously, I did speak about Baylert Valance a little bit. But here's some background information on him. So essentially, you first saw him in Han Solo Imperial Cadet comics in canon. And he's basically... He's like a bully, essentially, at that point. And he gives Han a hard time for basically the whole of the comics and things and no one really likes him that much and then he's in an accident uh, with a TIE fighter and it crashes and he gets wounded he then gets sort of not quite healed but some cybernetic replacements and certain aspects of him I think his eye is one of the things that goes and then he goes back and becomes a foot soldier so he's I think he's in Mumbai when it happens and that's the place that Han Solo is in in Solo when he meets uh, Woody Harrelson's character Beckett and that sort of gang and things when it's on that muddy world where there's war going on Valance then gets hurt even further there then he gets cybernetic replacements and then the Empire basically let him go essentially and, and that's his general backstory um, they go into more detail of it in the comic so I'll, I'll detail a little bit more as we go forward but also he was discharged as I said he was discharged from the Empire which is something that almost never happens which is quite interesting like in a good way normally if you leave the Empire you just get shot so <laughs> being able to serve in the Empire and then leave is actually something almost unheard of and also to add to this I just want to say in Legends Valance is actually, a, he's a really old character. He's one of the oldest. He was in the Legends comics, I believe, from 1978. So literally before even Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi came out, there were Star Wars comics that were ongoing. And Valance was in them. He appears in a few bits and pieces here and there outside of those Legends comics. But he does have a story which... It, it's not the same as this one, but you could, the core of the character is fairly similar because I was reading about him in Legends because I was just interested to see what happened to him and things. And it's it's quite interesting. He has like a massive hate of droids in Legends, but from what I can tell in canon, he, he does also hate droids, but for different reasons and things. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. I just thought that was cool. So in this Bounty Hunters Guild, it's basically a canteen or a bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, this gentleman walks up to Baylert. I'm probably going to call him Valance because I hate the pronunciation of Baylert and I feel like I'm pronouncing it wrong and my mouth seems to not pronounce it in the way my brain reads it. So I'm going to call him Valance from now on just to clarify. And uh, this guy walks up to Valance and things and says that he stole five bounties from him and has been stealing bounties from other people. And just for clarity, in the Bounty Hunters Guild, it's 
I don't know how you describe it. it. I wouldn't say like an air quote illegal, but you definitely shouldn't be stealing other people's bounties. It's very disrespectful, dishonorable and things. You kind of get what's coming to you if you start doing things like that. Valance is there and he doesn't really seem to care that much. And then some more bounty hunters enter the container and the guy who's speaking with him is like, um, oh, so you've got even more company now. You're screwed essentially. And Valance is like, nope, I actually planned this. This, You know, you're all here at once. I can dispose of you all. And he's like, what? And then there's this nice big fight out and shootout and things. It's a, quite a cool scene. It looks really nice. But as I've said prior in these podcast i'm not just going to describe all the action scenes you guys are going to have to read it to find that out so valance manages to beat basically all of them and things and after all that he basically gives the some credits to the barkeep who is a droid and the droid's like for the mess and he's like no for the next round and he's like to everyone there and then he he leaves that place seemingly just a little bit later and heads to his ship but he seems to be being followed now the person who's following is a Tarsunt named Gui. Now a Tarsunt is quite hard to describe without you guys seeing them. Um, there are ones in other aspects of Star Wars and things. Uh, one of the ones you'd probably recognise the most is in The Force Awakens when the Hosnian Prime system is blown up by Starkiller Base. You see the people on Hosnian Prime and they see that big red light coming towards them and there's a woman standing on a balcony along with like two or three other people behind her. Well, there's loads of people around her but two or three people are quite near the front you can see their faces. One of them is a Tarsunt. So they're basically, they kind of look like old wise men in a way. Um, so they're furry and they seem to have like their faces aren't furry, but the rest of their bodies seem to be. And they often have these sort of you know fur coming out of their chin that looks quite beard-like. Um, they have quite wide apart eyes and things. And their faces are, I guess, kind of monkey-ish like, I suppose. It's quite hard to describe. But yeah, they're basically hairy-ish, kind of monkey-ish people. But they're all sentient and things. So anyway, this Tarsunt called Gui goes after Valance and things and offers him quite a large amount of money. And I just want to read their exchange. So this exchange starts with Gui. I come in peace, and more importantly, with money. And more where this came from. And Valance says, talk. My name is Gui, and I am just a messenger for the hidden hand. Pass. You've been stealing bounties, Valance. You must have a heavy debt if you're willing to break the bounty hunter's code like that. Tonight won't be the last time your own kind will turn on you. Fortunately for you, my employers like rule breakers. They wish to set you free. They've assembled a team for a simple mission... Do the job, and these credits will erase that debt. And all you have to do is kill a man. Buddy, I've got two rules. First, always know who you're working for. Second, I work alone. But the hidden hand will kill me if I don't. Don't care. Wait, the target? Don't care. The target is Darth Vader. <sighs> Tell me about this team. So the next few panels are showing Valance the team, essentially. So the first member of the team is Hona, and she is a Gamorian guard. They're a tracker, and apparently they're a savage as well. Um, they're mentioned eating people. Uh, Gamorian guards, they're the pig people from Jabba's Palace in Episode 6. Then there's Urk, which is a female sniper, seems to be a Tuscan raider of sorts, and that's basically just the sniper of the gang. Then there's Chio Fane. Chio Fane is an Ardinian. Now, to clarify, an Ardinian is what Rio Durant was in Solo A Star Wars Story. So in Solo A Star Wars Story, the character voiced by Jon Favreau, who's got multiple arms and things, who is the pilot, and then he you know, sadly meets his end when the whole train heist thing goes bad. He is an Ardinian, and he is the slicer of the group. Then there's R919, a one-time Jedi hunter who never retired, and they are a droid. And then it says, and last but not least, Dengar. And with that introduction, Valance punches D Dengar straight in the face and says, we've met. And I just want to give you guys a little bit more information about Dengar, because it's a bit of fun, isn't it? So Dengar made his first appearance in Empire Strikes Back in that scene where you get to see all the bounty hunters. You get to see Boba Fett, Bosk, Dengar, Forlom, Zuckus and IG-88. And so Dengar, he's a gentleman who wears a turban-like headgear, and he is actually in the Clone Wars series as well. He's in a couple of episodes, and he's actually voiced by Simon Pegg in Clone Wars. And obviously Simon Pegg is a massive uh, Star Wars fan for anyone who isn't sure who he is. He's the guy who's in Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, A World's End, How to Lose Friends and Alienate People, Star Trek. Like, he, he's in lots of things. And funnily enough as well, he plays... Unkar Plutt in The Force Awakens, who is that big guy who Ray is trying to you know, sell stuff to him and he gives her like one quarter portion. You know, that, that guy. That's um, also played by Simon Pegg, funnily enough. And also with Dengar, he does appear in the Bounty Hunters comics as well, to my knowledge, I think. 
Um, and he is also in the Aftermath trilogy of books. I think he's only in one of them. But the Aftermath books by Chuck Wendig, they're the ones that are set within a year and a half at the end of Return of the Jedi. And there's one other little interesting tidbit that I may have mentioned on the podcast before, but seemingly Dengar becomes this character called Rothgar Den. And it's in the Rise of Skywalker in like a background character. I believe in the visual dictionaries you can see a better sort of image of them. But essentially they don't look anything like Dengar anymore, but it seems to just be a head on a purely cybernetic body. Now there might be organs inside that, but he looks quite freaky. So I'd say if you guys are listening, I would presume most of you know what Dengar looks like. And obviously I'm uploading photos and whatnot to social media to kind of say when I release this as well. And people on Patreon will have already seen those photos. But if you look up Rothgar Den, you'll see how weird he looks. And yeah, apparently they are the same person, which kind of makes sense, you know, Dengar, Rothgar Den, you know, it's that sort of thing. Then after that little introduction with Dengar and uh, Valance, after, you know, Valance hits Dengar and then he's just like, oh, you're still upset about the Raylan job, eh? Spare parts. And Gui says to him, is there a problem? And Valance like, yeah, my third rule, no droids. And then he basically destroys that Jedi hunter droid using his arm cannon. For clarity, one of his arms, Valance's arms, it has this, well, it's an arm cannon. It shoots this, it's almost like Iron Man sort of style where it shoots out like a beam of energy. And what's quite interesting is in one of the Bounty Hunters comics, I can't remember for the life of me which one, there is like a, a, not a readout, but it looks like blueprints almost of Valance. And you actually get to see all of the different things that his cybernetic body can do, uh, which I'll get into that a little bit more later. And then Gui was like, Valance, we needed him. And Valance was like, no, he wasn't a Jedi killer. He's a liar. He was actually up to his bolts in debt to the huts. And Valance pulls out a tracker outside of the droid. And Valance says, well, assuming that you don't want your bosses or us to be tracked by rival syndicates, I've done the right thing. And then Valance is like, right, enough talk. Let's go kill Darth Vader. And then this comic ends with Vader kills several more people, as he often does. And then he's trying to find out some more information about bits and pieces about the hidden hand. And he also asks about the plot to murder him. Then the last page shows a group of people hidden in an asteroid field or asteroid belt, however you want to call it. And... It says, message received from our operative. The bounty hunters are on the hunt for Vader. And a woman says, excellent. When Vader's out of the picture, nothing will stand in the way of the rebellion. And that's where comic number one ends. So comic number two is called The Plan. And it starts off with a flashback of Valance. And he's on a mining world called Chorin. And he's there with his dad and things. And it turns out that the whole planet has basically been enslaved the whole time. There's been generations and generations of miners who've just been completely slaves and have to just keep mining all the time. And then the Empire comes by, gets rid of all the slavery and things, and then basically employs the people to be able to keep mining and things, but actually get paid somewhat for it. And so because of that, it means that the people are actually free now. So they say to Valance, you can do what you want, and Valance wants to go off, explore the galaxy, and join the Imperial Academy. So it cuts to now, and it's got Valance, he is flying a ship, and he shoots a couple of TIE fighters. Now, Dengar is very worried about that, because, you know, the Empire and things. But the Ardinian, as I said before, Chio Fane, he actually says, oh, well, I've seen some tech on this ship. I can see there's like a special tracker thing. It actually shows that it's a jammer, so that it prevents any short-range frequencies coming out of the TIE fighters, so they can't contact anyone else, because those TIE fighters are just scouts, so you don't need to worry about that. They then go to the planet Arvina, and I can't find record of this place anywhere else, but Valance asks Uruk to stay by the ship and to basically provide cover fire because obviously she's a sniper. The remaining crew that are walking towards a nearby settlement ask Valance, well, why are we going here and things? You know, Fetya isn't really a friend of people. And Valance says, I'm not looking for friends. I'm looking for a weapon. So Fetia appears, and Fetia is actually a Bessalisk. Now that species may not sound familiar, but you guys should recognise them. Dexter Jetster, um, so Obi-Wan's friend in the cafe place in episode 2, Attack of the Clones. He, that's the species. He's a Bessalisk. They appear a little bit here and there in canon and stuff, but yeah, that's basically what they look like. So Fetia and Valance are discussing things. Fetia confirms that she's been, you know, dealing with the um, hidden hand, and that she knows the hidden hand are basically selling to the rebellion, but they get paid a lot, so, you know, there's not really a big deal there. Then Fetia and seemingly her gang that appear randomly uh, surround the bounty hunters with weapons. Then the explosion starts to happen around them and things, and then the ground starts shaking more and there's more and more explosions. And it turns out that there's a Star Destroyer that has now come into orbit and is barraging the planet. It turns out that Valance actually amplified the signal of the Imperial TIE Fighters, not actually trying to stifle it or jam it like they initially thought. He's actually amplifying it and added in a couple of Hidden Hands cool signs as well, just to get, you know, the Empire really riled up about it. 
Fetius thugs chase the gang, but eventually Valance and the gang manage to get back to the transport after some help because Urk managed to shoot the gang and they get to their ship and things and then Urk is still outside. Urk uses their rifle to actually shoot down two TIE fighters by shooting like their wings and a chunk falls out the wing and then it makes them unable to fly properly and then they crash. Darth Vader is in a TIE fighter as well, um, pursuing, and gets pretty damn close, but then Valance and the crew, all on the ship, they use hyperdrive and get out of there. Vader then basically interrogates the people left on that planet, force chokes Fetia and the gang, or Fetia's gang, I should say, and just basically tortures them to get more information. And while that's happening, it's confirmed that Chio Fane actually sliced into Fetia's data banks while they're in the shop and things, and took the delivery data, so they actually know where Vader is going to be going next. And the final panel of this comic is that Vader actually has an informant on Valance's ship who is feeding them information, so although Valance think they're going to be one step ahead, they're actually not. The Empire are going to be one step ahead of them. So that's where comic number two ends, and comic number three starts, and it's called The Trap. And it starts off with another flashback. It starts with Valance in the Imperial Academy, it shows the accident he had with the TIE Fighter that was in the Han Solo comics, and then it also shows that he was then a grunt. Um, what I said slightly earlier was a little bit wrong, so he was injured and he had to have, I think, some degree of cybernetics, but his eye wasn't quite gone yet. Then he carried on as a grunt, and then he got his uh, replacement eye and things, and then he continued even further, still as a soldier. And then they were basically about to have to go over the trench, in a sense, to fight the bad guys, in air quotes, even though the Empire are probably the bad guys in this scenario. And they come face to face with the enemy, and then as they seem, it seems like they're just about to die, Vader shows up and saves them. It's got a really cool shot, though, of Vader with like an explosion behind him, and it says, Rise, troopers. The Empire marches on. Now, back in current day, Valance and Chio Fane are discussing things, and Valance takes an electro pulse out of a gun, saying it'd be helpful to take down Darth Vader. And they're basically trying to lure Darth Vader to where they are. And it shows that Dengar and Honor are talking to this guy about buying these droid ship things. And this guy, his name is Weff. His species is a Melbu. He is trying to yeah, sell these things to these guys. And he's a very talkative chap. Now, Melbu are quite a new species into the canon. They are actually first seen in Solo, a Star Wars story. Then they were also seen in Mandalorian chapters 1, 3, and 12. So across the two seasons. They have big bug eyes. They have horns and a respirator mask. So it's kind of, if you remember what Plo Koon, the Jedi from the prequel era looks like, um, with his mask, he kind of looks like that, but if you made his eyes much bigger and then had horns coming out of the top that are quite high, so the shape of the head is quite almost, almost like a goat in certain ways. You know, when you have the goats, they have the horns that go back rather than going out. So, you know, you get certain antlers and things that kind of go out away from the face, and there's other ones that kind of go out upwards away from the head. It's more so like the latter things. So that's what a Melbu is. So what gets confirmed is that these bot drone things, they are actually being sold to the Hidden Hand. But Weth has said that he's happy to sell them to these other guys, you know, Dengar and Honor, but it would have to be a quite a substantial markup. And it's also worth mentioning that Weth says that the Hidden Hand that he's been dealing with, they seem to work quite a lot like bounty hunters. While that's happening, Chio Fane manages to hack into the Droid Command Center. And while that happens, the Empire appear with a Star Destroyer. Valance flies his ship with Urk and also those droid or the bot droids as well. And you've got Chio Fane is actually controlling the droids. He's got like a VR headset almost sort of thing on. So he's trying to control the droids while Valance is flying and Urk is going to be shooting while in the ship of Valance's, which is called the Broken Wing. And in this whole comic, Urk is actually speaking what seems to be the language of the Tusken Raiders. And Valance actually says when they're in that ship by themselves, you don't have to speak Tusken when it's just us, kid. And Valance says, Tuscans never leave Tatooine, which you would know if you're really a Tuscan. I don't care who you are under the getup, I just hope you're as good with a cannon as you are with a rifle. So a shootout starts to happen and things, and Valance flies towards Darth Vader. And Darth Vader manages to almost destroy the broken wing, he shoots it, keeps getting hits on it, and obviously Vader's one of, if not the greatest pilot there is. So Valance's ship is damaged, and then 
Chio Fane manages to get the um, bot drones to do what they've been planning. They all connect together. They they look like almost pod racers. You know, we're in Phantom Menace when you have the pod race and there's the two parts of the engine and then it's, there's that string that basically connects them to the the cockpit area. I'm thinking about Anakin's more so. One of those sort of pod racer things, which also Cobb Vanth flies or rides in Mandalorian series two episode one, I think, and they kind of look a little bit like that. So it almost just looks like a jet engine just by itself, and several of those connect together. Uh, into a little shape and then they shoot this like super laser that hits um, a star destroyer and the star destroyer almost immediately kind of explodes and then starts plummeting towards the planet so as the star destroyer is down Valance's ship starts to fly away but Darth Vader follows keeps shooting it and things and then Valance's ship has to do a crash landing while this is happening, Dengar and Hona are in position, as their plan went, and they actually destroy Vader's landed TIE fighter, because what happens is Vader lands his TIE fighter to go into the broken wing to try and, you know, kill Valance and whoever else was in there, and once Vader enters the broken wing, then Dengar and whatnot blow up Vader's TIE fighter. Because Valance and Urk are no longer in the ship, and then the comic ends with Valance aiming at Darth Vader in a scope and mentioning, now it's time to kill Darth Vader. So comic number four starts, it's called The Shot, and it shows that there's another Star Destroyer in the atmosphere, and one of the officers on there, they're talking with a subordinate, and they're saying, should we send down reinforcements? And they're like, no, let's give Darth Vader 15 minutes, um, because he'll be able to dispose of the bounty hunters in more than enough time, so we'll give him that. And while this is happening, Valance confirms to the team that he needs to, he's only got one shot for this, he needs to use this EMP thing, but it's contact only. So he has to go up close to Darth Vader and put this EMP on him, and it should incapacitate him. So a lot of the gang are sort of aiming at Vader, and then Vader uses the force and brings up loads and loads of dust to prevent their sights and things. And then Chio Fane basically runs towards Darth Vader, saying he's going to get him. And it has a flashback that shows that his partner, which I think is called Rone, was flying a ship along with him uh, in a, a separate ship. And basically the Empire appeared and destroyed her ship, killing her just so Chio could escape. And so he's got the personal grudge against the Empire and Darth Vader. So Chio, he's an Ardinian, so he's got several arms. So he's holding four blasters, all shooting at Vader at once. Vader deflects all of them and things, and one of them actually flies off and hits Valance. Urk checks on Valance. It turns out he's okay. It hits the cybernetic side and he'll live. And it turns out that she's actually just a human woman. because She lifts up her mask to check on him. There's more of a skirmish going on, and some of these panels are excellent. I would recommend you guys check them out. But Chio Fane gets all his arms, or three of his four arms, sliced off by Vader, and then Honor attacks, which is the Gamorrean guard. It has her flashback, and it shows her in some sort of foresty area, and she's walking towards this building that's on fire, and there's loads of her people around that are all dead, and including lots of Imperials, so her family were seemingly murdered by the Empire. Then back to the present, Darth Vader kills Chio Fan, basically slices and throws him, and throwing his corpse at Hona. Urk is seeing this happening, but Valance says, no, you need to cover me while I go for this. Then it shows Urk's flashback. Urk's flashback shows that her name is Jita, I think, uh, G-I-T-A. It might be Jita, it might be Gita, and it shows her hunting on a planet with another woman, and she takes a shot and is aiming for a buck, which is basically, it looks like a deer, um, but, you know, a deer as a buck is a male deer, so it's got big antlers and things, and shoots at this deer, but only wounds it, and then the person with her says, well, now the meat's going to spoil, the animal's going to run off and be bleeding out for ages, and then the meat's going to spoil, so you need to always shoot to kill. As she's thinking about that, she fires on Vader and catches him in the arm. Vader then lifts up Jita with the Force, and Valance runs at Darth Vader. Darth Vader slices Honor in half across, which is quite brutal to look at, and the final panel shows that Valance is going towards Darth Vader with the EMP pulse thing, gets really close, is about to get him with it, and then just misses it. And as he just misses, Dengar appears and shocks him with the very device that he was going to use on Vader, and that's where that comic ends. So then comic number five, it's called The Past, and you guessed it, it starts with a flashback. So it shows Valance, and he's back on Chorin, and he speaks to a girl called Yura. She gives him some sort of gem, it looks like a ruby of some sort, and then basically says goodbye, because obviously he's leaving to join the Empire at that time. It then shows a far more in-depth look at how Valance got some of his wounds, and one of the panels is showing that he actually got his ankle completely blown off. He's on fire, but it's a pretty brutal shot. He's basically been almost completely set on fire, like half of his face, uh, his entire body seemingly, um, his legs seem to have been partly blown off, so you get to see what he looks like cybernetically. 
So it cuts back to now, and it's got Darth Vader paying Dengar for his services and asking if he knows anything further about the Hidden Hand. Dengar says, I gave you all that I could, and also... Valance isn't going to give you anything at all. He's, he's not going to talk, so you've got loads. And Darth Vader says basically, thanks. Not literally by saying thanks, because he seems to never thank anyone, but he says that he'll contact Dengar again if his services are needed. And obviously that is a call to Empire Strikes Back when you next see Dengar and Cannon. It shows that Valance has actually been interrogated for days by droids and things, and nothing seems to work. He just keeps saying, keep going, and none of the interrogation or torture techniques works. So... Vader goes into the room by himself with Valance, and Valance says that he's got him right where he wants him. And Vader continues to torture Valance. He seems to be hurting his robotic side. It seems like he's using the Force to slightly crush the cybernetics in Valance, which is causing him to smoke and get damaged. And while Vader is torturing Valance, he is pointing at some star maps and things and saying, tell me what you see. And Valance is like, well, I know that you've basically been to all the hidden outposts, you've wiped them out, and they've all been to nothing but dead ends. So, you know, get me out of the restraints and we'll sort it out. And Vader is continuing to torture him and says, if you do not tell me what I need, you will never feel anything again. And that leads to another flashback. Now, in this very flashback, it's got Valance after he's had all the horrible things happen to him and he's trying to go through like rehabilitation. And you get to see him like without any hair, just with clothes on, and he's got cybernetic arms, legs, and part of his face. So all that seems to really be left is his torso and most of his head. So it's quite a lot of, he's basically a cyborg at this point, which I think people do refer to him as. He gets approached by a guy called Urib. Now, Urib is actually in the Han Solo Imperial Cadet comics. He's, I believe, a flight instructor. He's quite high up there and quite respected in the Empire. And he basically says that he's there to help Valance by basically getting him discharged from the Empire. And Valance is pretty outraged by this, but he's like, well, the Empire spent so much money fixing you up and things. You should actually be lucky they even did this to you this far. Um, if I hadn't intervened, they would have just let you die because this was a very costly manner and the Empire aren't going to get that back. But they're not putting you in service again. So you actually get something that people don't get when they enroll in the empire you've got your freedom cherish it and the last interaction in that panel shows that europe says to valance look you can go home and it shows valance going home so on valance's home world of chorin it shows that valance's dad is dead and there's fields of graves and things and euro goes up and speaks to him and, and basically says the empire stripped the whole planet took away the, the all the resources and things that we could have made money on and then they left when they there was nothing else to take and then because they left they were completely defenseless and then the miners were attacked by some raiders and things which caused further death the valance says that he vows to find out who did this and he heads off then it cuts back to sort of now time and Valance is in that room being interrogated and thing and he's connected. He's like restrained and things, but no one's there. What he does in his restraints is he manages to rip his own cybernetic arm off just above the uh, elbow that's kind of left attached to him. And then he jams that into the control panel that is nearish to him. It seems to overload the circuits, open up the restraints and he can get out. He manages to put his arm back on somehow and then he makes a bit of noise inside and then the stormtroopers that are guarding the outside of the room go in, you see some comical crack noises and then Valance comes out wearing the stormtrooper armour. Valance heads to his own ship and Darth Vader stops him and basically gets him to go to Chorin, his homeworld. While Valance is there with Vader, he confirms that he actually did leave his um, village to go and get the raiders. But when he got there, it turned out the raiders had just left. They'd moved on because it'd been quite a while since it all happened. So he never really went back to Chorin. He just kept on going. And he said that both himself and the Empire failed to protect Chorin. And that's where the Hidden Hand was born. That it came out of necessity. And that's failings on both sides. Darth Vader threatens Valance, saying that he'll basically his people won't be safe if Valance doesn't cooperate and whatnot, and then he welcomes Valance back into the Empire. Valance heads to a planet called Loic, where there's a rebel outpost there, and the re one of the rebels in that area was actually Urk. Now the rebels are saying that the Hidden Hands seem to have gone silent, and while they're discussing this, Valance walks in, and he says that he needs the Hidden Hand, those rebels need weapons, so he says we need to work together. And that is where issue number five ends. So we are on the sixth and the final comic, and this comic is simply called Free. So it starts, surprisingly, with a flashback, and it's got Valance with a gentleman named Kavik. They're in the ship, the Broken Wing. They manage to lose the Empire, who are seemingly chasing them, and Kavik says that he's made several outposts across the galaxy in asteroid fields, because that's where people don't actually look, especially on the Empire. So they basically make, like, bases embedded into asteroids in an asteroid belt. And... He says that, you know, if they live amongst these outposts and things, they will truly be free. 
So in the now time, it shows rebels on Loic once again, and they're uneasy about Valance's plan. They're not sure if they can actually trust him. While that's happening, Valance scopes the place, and this place is where the hidden hand are supposedly going to be. So he's there with like a sniper rifle, just taking a look and whatnot, and some people approach him from behind and basically grab him. And as that happens, he drops something, a little blinking thing, and they don't seem to notice. Valance is then taken to meet the leader of the Hidden Hand, and that leader is Gui, the guy who's a Tarsunt, and he was from the earlier issues. While Valance is held, Gui starts hitting Valance, asking him questions, you know, why he's doing what he's doing and things like that. And Valance says, why, well, I just don't like you. And then Gui hits him several more times, and it turns out that he's doing it for Chorin. And Gui is like, what, the backwater village? How did you know about... And then stops himself. And then he's like, ah... Uh, he says, so all of this has been about revenge, huh? And he's like, pathetic. And he pistol whips Valance. And now Valance's face is like, you know, bleeding quite heavily. He puts the gun to Valance's head and said, all this way for nothing. And now, and you hear someone say, you die. And the next panel is a very epic looking picture of Darth Vader standing there with stormtroopers saying, kill them all. So Darth Vader is approaching and is basically slicing through members of the Hidden Hand. And Valance attacks Gui. Darth Vader then stops Valance from killing Gui because he says he needs to take Gui prisoner. While that's all happening and Vader's taking Gui and there's still some fighting going on, Valance manages to sneak off and gets picked up by his own ship, the Broken Wing. When Vader notices that Valance is gone, he immediately sends some orders to some troopers to go to Chorin and burn it to the ground with no survivors. So there's some stormtroopers there with um, flamethrowers and weapons and whatnot, and they're looking around and there is absolutely no one there. And they're like, uh-oh. <laughs> So it goes to Valance and it shows that he has actually managed to get his people to Loic in that rebel outpost that the Empire doesn't know about. And he's managed to do it all without the Empire knowing. And that was part of the plan all along. He got the rebels to take his ship, pick up all of the people from Chorin, move them to somewhere safe that the Empire wouldn't find them. And then Valance could divide the Empire, run away, and then the people of Chorin wouldn't suffer. The rebels on the planet say that the place here is nice, you know, with the people of Chorin, and they ask Valance to stay and help. He says no, and then he gives that gem that he had back to Eula, that ruby thing that I mentioned earlier. And we're coming to the end of the comic now, but there's a sort of little epilogue bit that I want to say. And essentially, it's got Dengar. He's in a bar in Coruscant. He's bragging about his job and saying that Darth Vader isn't so tough and he feels like he may even be able to take him on himself, which, just for clarity, Dengar would get absolutely slaughtered by Darth Vader if he was by himself. And Valance approaches and punches Dengar in the face, and Dengar sort of knocked out on the floor. Valance gets a drink and says to the barkeep, buy me a drink for not killing the guy. And the bartender says, well, I thought you got all those credits after Dengar's big job. What happened? And he's like, first of all, Dengar betrayed the entire crew and myself, and everyone is basically dead now. And secondly, I'm a bounty hunter. What do you think I spent those credits on? I spent on something stupid. And the last panel actually shows some rebels on Loic with like some extra weapons and things like that. So clearly Valance has given some of his, the amount he made, his cut to basically the rebellion, but also the rebel sect that are kind of helping out his people. And that, my friends, is where Target Vader ends. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that. This is one of those comics I would recommend. Some of the art in it is amazing and some of the action scenes that I either didn't mention or kind of glazed over are really, really cool as well. Especially the bit where Vader is fighting the gang of bounty hunters. It's it's a really, really cool uh, set of panels and things. And, you know, I said it in the start here, but just clarify in Star Wars Comics in Canon episode 10, I think, I tackled the Han Solo Imperial Cadet comic and that's where we kind of first saw Valance in the canon. I've included in the description mentions of that comic and sort of other things as well and i'm just going to say so what we've got coming up so next week is actually going to be a special episode and not because it's episode 50 it's actually episode 50 will be out the week after that but next week is going to be i'm going to be dropping the episode that i did of genuine chit chat that i'm going to put on this feed as well which was my conversation with a gentleman named dominic pace he plays a character in mandalorian um, season one episodes one and three and he plays a character called gecko and it's just it was a really really interesting conversation with someone who's not a mega star who's been on the set of of Mandalorian and things and just he has some cool stories so it was really really fun to chat with him and uh, my friend Glyn he actually helped connect us so I had Glyn on the show as well and Glyn had a couple of questions for Dominic too so it's a really fun chat it's under an hour um, so I'll be releasing that next Sunday 
And then the week after that is going to be episode number 50. And so for episode number 50, I'm going to do what I did for episode 25, and I'm going to do a big old Q&A. So I'm going to be putting things out on social media and whatnot to basically get questions from people. I'm going to put it on my Patreon as well, ask if any of the patrons want to put any questions in. But basically, guys, I'll be answering questions. You can either do things about preferences, like do I like this character more or that character more? Who's my favorite character from this or that? Or you can just ask me questions about Star Wars that you don't want to have to research. You know, things that you can ask me. Even if I've tackled them in a previous episode if you just want a short answer rather than having to listen to stuff you can ask that you know questions about dooku or maul or even 3p on his red arm any questions you want to ask about star wars i will answer either about myself personally or objectively what the true canon actually answer is so that's what you can look forward to over the next coming weeks and then after that episode 51 is gonna be the next afra set of comics so that'll be the next batch and then the week after that is probably going to be the next batch of age of comics and this is going to be the age of resistance so i think i'm going to do age of resistance villains first i think i think i've been doing villains more first than heroes so i'll do that then the week after that will be you know the main run of star wars comics again then after that it will be the next mini series which i'm pretty sure the only mini series i've actually got left now are the canaan comics now the canaan comics there's actually 12 of them so it's not a mini series as it were it's just kind of i call it a moderate series because like a full length is like 20 plus it seems and it was just like a year-long thing i'll probably split that into two because i think tackling 12 issues for one episode will be quite a lot to deal with and i won't be able to give you guys as much detail as i kind of wanted but then after that it will be back to afra so that's the next sort of month and a bit sort of panned out next week is going to be a chat with dominic pace the week after that is going to be q a and then the week after that will be back to the usual schedule which is star wars miniseries dr afra age of and back in that loop but obviously once i've done the canaan stuff and also once i've done the age of stuff which will be done in the next two months i think then i will be free in the sense of i won't be sticking to such a strict schedule in the sense but i will be tackling other stuff there's going to be some new comics that are out at the moment there's going to be you know the second run of darth vader comics which is probably the next thing i'm going to tackle and then you know in a few months time as well i'll have done the main run of star wars comics and after i've basically caught up with everything i could start tackling other things like some of the idw comics uh, as well as you know trying to get more interviews and conversations with other content creators for star wars and do lots of other things like that so if you guys do have any suggestions this won't be for a while yet but when i kind of catch up to myself on some of the star wars comics see what i kind of get done i will probably end up doing some spoiler free reviews and uh whatnot of some of the new comics and things the bounty hunters ones the high republic ones there's loads to get your hands on and things so that's that's really what you can expect from me i was just going to say check out my other show genuine chits chat where i have a different guest on each episode and things the styles related ones i will generally post on this feed as well two reasons one so you lovely guys can listen to it if you're not subscribed to genuine chit chat you can listen to it i would love for everyone subscribed to comics emotion to subscribe to genuine chit chat but i appreciate that's not everyone's cup of tea so you guys get you know, doubly feeds and also i do have a patreon it is called patreon.com slash genuine chit chat uh, on there if you go there right now there are two episodes up there completely for free of the new show i'm doing called afterthoughts i do it with my girlfriend megan and basically we've been doing it on movies and tv series we've been recording at episodes that are about 10 20 minutes long or so some of them have been up to about half an hour actually we're watching the star wars films we're watching uh the captain america trilogy we're watching the spider-man trilogy the sam raimi one and then the amazing spider-man as well 10 things i hate about you the queen's gambit series the witcher series lots of other things murder among the mormons that's a documentary we watched recently and i'm releasing two episodes a week at the moment um along with certain episodes i get done if i manage to edit and sort things out earlier than my release schedule which obviously this comes out on saturdays styles comics and canon and on genuine chit chat it's normally episodes on sundays if i do anything quicker then i release them just on patreon early so normally you get early access by a few days you get photos of all the comics and things for star wars comics and canon i tackle and you get it a few days before i put them on social media you get photos of behind the scenes stuff i'm doing funko pop fridays at the moment where i'm just taking photos of my funko pops and putting them on patreon on fridays so that's a bit of fun too there's videos of my tortoise doing silly things and falling off and also there are two episodes of afterthoughts completely for free star wars the phantom menace and the witcher 
Witcher Series 1. If you go on to the website, patreon.com slash genuine chit chat, which is in the link to that is in the description, you I don't think you even need to make an account. You just go on the thing and when it says you can choose what tier, you can scroll down beyond that and then it'll have a little video of me explaining what's on the Patreon and you get to see my lovely face, huzzah. Uh, and then you scroll slightly below that and it'll have loads of locked posts, but there will be posts that you can actually view and listen to as well. Any patrons as well, if you donate as little as, well I say donate, if you support the show for extra content and things for £2 a month, which is $3, which is the lowest of the three tiers I've got on there at the moment, you get access to the Patreon feed, which is basically you get a link that you can put into your podcast player of choice and you will get all of the Genuine Chitter episodes that I've done since launching a Patreon split into part one and part two they're in one full unsplit episode as well as all of my afterthought shows which come out twice a week as well um so there's lots of content it means that if you pay as little as two pounds a month um it will it really helps the show out because it does cost me money still even with several patrons and things it's still costing me money to run both this podcast and the other one and it just means that i can do these things basically for free and if i get more and more people everyone on Patreon will get more stuff. So I'll do more special shows and things like that. I'm thinking about doing some one-off episodes where I just record myself rambling on, but I seem to do that at the end of both Genuine Chit Chat and Star Wars Comics and Canon anyway, so we shall see. Um, but if anyone does check out um, Patreon, I really, really appreciate it, even if you just go take a look and see what there is and see if it interests you. Um, and also, you know, two free episodes on there anyway, so there's no harm checking it out. If you want to support the show without any financial uh, investment, I wouldn't say investment, without any financial contribution which is completely fine share on social media tell your friends both about genuine chit chat and about comics in motion and my show on comics in motion as well because it would just help greatly as well as leaving reviews and all that other sort of stuff too and the other other thing really is that I was recently on an episode of 20th Century Geek doing Desert Island Comics. I tackled the, well, I used three comics as my Desert Island Comics, two Darth Vader comics that I have not yet tackled on Styles Comics and Canon yet. They're from the 2017 Charles Saul run, so make sure you look out for those. Uh, and also the C-3PO comic where he gets his red arm, which goes surprisingly deep into, you know, artificial intelligence and consciousness of machines and droids and things so me and Scott had a really really good conversation on that too links to that in the description and I was also the host slash moderator of a Zack Snyder's Justice League conversation uh, that episode came out I think yesterday so the day before you'll be listening to this so the 26th of March 2021 it's a long two hour discussion with myself Chris and Dave Max Byrne and Steve J Ray we're all members of the Comics and Motion family and we just had this big old chat about Justice League, um, the Snyder Cut. It's a really fun chat. We're all generally fairly positive about it. But if you want to check that out, please do and share the love with all the other people involved. So that is it from me, guys. Thank you, as always, for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you listening all the way to the end through all my rambles and stuff. It is appreciated. I love all of my patrons. You mean the absolute world to me. And I love anyone willing to check out my show. So thank you, as always, guys. Really appreciate it. I'll talk to you next Saturday um, with my chat with Dominic Pace. And as always, guys... May the force be with you.